Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 630 Multi Instance. We're going to register it, configure, uh, and I'll ultimately deploy. But let's remind you, this is the third video in a series of four. Um, so we have an FTDA multi instance with inside zone A, and we have a B side as well. And we have an outside uh, zone, and we're managing uh, these platforms again using FMC. Multi instance is pretty cool. Uh, we talked about that in the previous video. But now what we'll be doing is some of the things that uh, you're probably more aware of, right, within Firepower Management Center. And when we go through this, we're going to use a couple of scripts just to fast track a couple of things. That That's uh, using the RESTful API. We're going to do, we're going to register the device and we're going to also configure the interfaces for the devices as well using that Python script uh, leveraging REST, right? Um, and then we're going to do a couple little pre -configure, uh, configurations. But uh, very quickly, just a level set, we have a, an access control policy already built uh, that we're going to reference. And you can see that there's objects that are already built and uh, in, in play. So if you look at device management, very quickly you can see there's no devices currently registered. Now, when we did the pre-setup, we told the FTD instances where to point, right? To point to Firepower Management Center. We now have to either manually go in here and add those devices, or what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take advantage of uh, the RESTful API, and I'm not gonna explain and, and, and go through the script in, in any detail, but um, we're gonna script this and, and run the execution and have the appliance uh, register uh, on its uh, through programmatic means. <clears throat> so here's a couple scripts that we have. Um, so first, we'll we'll uh, I'm just going to double click this one. It's going to start going through the process. Now you have to let these completely finish, right? You don't want them to go partially through. Um, so you want to make sure that you completely configure these. And you can see some things as it's going through, like the host name, you've got the name of the device, FTD-A, yeah, right? You've got your tokens, you've got your registration key, right? And now you can see it's pulling uh, for the registration to complete, right? So it's went and done its all its little uh, magical elements, right, uh, through programmatic means. And again, you're not missing anything because I know I, I, I try to always show you the first step to the last step, but there's I've got tons of videos that show, you know, how to add a device into FMC uh, using traditional means. And so if you're a regular viewer, um, I'm trying to streamline this a little bit for you. If you're new, just look at the playlist. You'll find device registration and, and go through that process. But again, it's very simple, that add button, and it kind of walks you through. So the second script we're going to run, I'm just going to come in here and call Python to, to run that script. And again, very much the same, right? It's going to run that script. you got to let it uh, completely finish. Um, it'll push uh, the deployment of it as well. Um, and, and so here we have it. And this would be B, of course, right? Because we've already uh, ran the script against FTD A. Now we're running it against B. And you can see here, again, very similar things, right? You see that base access control policy fly by there. Um, so that's going to run. Let's just have a real quick look at the... Um, the actual script itself. Again, I'm not going to go through detail in explaining it. Um, there is some highlights here. And again, if you have access to dcloud, ask a, you know Cisco rep. Um, they, they can certainly get you access and and uh, to this. And you can come in here and look at these scripts and see how they're built and and build upon them for your environment if that's what you choose. There's also an extensive amount of uh, information in GitHub as well, right? So we can see that this is actually going through. We see it's part of a multi-instance, uh, and we see that's referencing instance uh, FTDA, um, and it's coming in, right? And so is FTDB. So it's going through the registration process, and we can look at some things in here. You can see the interfaces aren't configured yet. We're going to run that as a separate script. You can see that they're both down. 1.1 is, is enabled, but, uh, but that's it. All right, so these will come online. Um, here's the access control policy that's uh, been built 
Uh, it's uh, trivial uh, access control policy, right? You're not you're not building a whole bunch of security with this policy, um, but it just shows that you could programmatically script that and have these devices automatically added to that that policy itself. So I'm just gonna hit save anyway. It's just a, a habit of mine. And we can see that that has uh, run successfully. So what we'll do now is we'll do the configurations of the interfaces. Again, you can see this in another video. Uh, it's fairly uh, uh, self-explanatory. Once you're in device admin, once you pick your specific device that you want to configure, uh, you just go into each interface and add the uh, uh, elements that you want added to that interface, right? And, uh, and that'd be it. Here, we're just using uh, you know, the, the RESTful API to do the magic for us. You see interface uh, one slash five, fly by there, then one slash four. So it takes a little bit, but once you build these out, right? Uh, we all know that scripting's powerful, and 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 we also all know that uh, that you know there's a transition in in not only the networking space, um, but also in the security space where a lot more automations taking place. So you can see there's a type to deploy um, or deployment request, and if we come in, we can see that it's actually in the the middle of that deployment now. So we can see they're all green. We can see that uh, the deployment has been successful. And we can see the interfaces have now a logical name, a security zone, and an IP address. And the reason why you may have seen my devices is red. I have a time sync issue at this point in time. Nothing I'm concerned about. Um, but anyways, here, I'm not concerned about it because it's a lab environment. If it was real world, I certainly would. Um, but anyways, here we're going to enable OSPF. Um, and uh, it's area, I, area ID 0. And then we're going to add the uh, networks that we want advertised. So the inside and outside uh, interface or uh, object groups are actually uh, networks. The, the, the ones that reference the interface E1 and out, you know, E1-2, um, those are actually specific IP addresses, so a slash 32. So here, here we go, and, and those were already pre-configured objects, right? So um, here we're gonna add the that interface that we want advertised on, and you can see there's all kinds of stuff that you can configure here: authentication, the dead interval, the hello interval, etc. Right, the default cost. Um, we're not doing anything uh, magical here. Um, this is just to give you a, a quick idea that you know we've got these two multi instances. They're configured. They're in uh, routed mode. Um, and we're gonna pass traffic to those at some point, right? So when we look at B, again, you can see the interfaces are configured. We'll just go into OSPF here, and we will configure OSPF as well on this box. Now remember, those FTDA and FTDB are running as multi-instances on that 4110. So they're actually running on the same physical hardware um, in their container, and they're completely 100% isolated from each other, right? They're not sharing CPU, memory. Um, they've got specific disk allocated to them. They are independent, right? The interfaces in this case, too, are not even shared. So go through here again, FTDB inside and, and outside. Those are the networks we want to advertise. And here we will add the interface. And again, you can uh, do some additional configurations here as well. So 
So I'll hit OK. We'll save it out. And then we'll deploy. Now when you deploy, you can see there's uh, inspect interruption. And when we highlight that, we've done that for a few versions. Um, and we let you know if there is gonna be any impact to inspection at all. You see here, detailed device configuration. If we scroll down, we are going to see that um, OSPF routing is, is tweaked, right? So we're gonna deploy that. So we'll select all devices, we'll hit deploy. And again, as time has moved on, the deploy times have significantly reduced, right? Um, and we've just announced 6.4 release uh, where they further uh, have reduced the time to deploy. All right, so we're deploying away here. You can see uh, we're about 13 seconds in. And you can see this deploy was 25 seconds. Now, it wasn't a whole lot, but, but uh, you can see 25 or 26 seconds in that deploy. Now what we'll do is we'll SSH into both FTDA um, and then we'll do B afterwards and we'll just very quickly do um, show OSPF net neighbors uh, and then we'll do a show IP route as well. Now folks that come from iOS that uh, you know they have a habit or at least I still do is show IP OSPF um, neighbors but um, I come to realize very quickly that uh, you know I'm not on uh, an iOS device. So show OSPF neighbors or neighbor. And you can see we're in full state. Um, you can see the interface is the IP address, the neighbor ID. Oh, and show route, right? I think I may have said show IP route, right? But that's iOS. So show route. Um, now you can see that we, we are receiving a route as well. So we'll do the same on FTDB just to ensure that we complete uh, both sides and, and that they're actually functioning. So we'll log in here. Show OSPF neighbor. And again, we see we're in full. We're a designated router. We'll do a show uh, route. And you can see we actually get an external route uh, to type two. Um, anyways, so that's it, right? We can see the instances here. We can see total instances, um, but pretty easy stuff, right? Um, use a RESTful API to get stuff pushed out. Cool.